Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today what we're going to be doing is calculating the pH of a salt. In particular, we're going to look at the salt NaClO, which is what we usually call chlorine that goes into neighborhood pools. Turns out NaClO actually is basic. When you look at it, there's no OH there, so you wouldn't actually think it would act like a base, but it does. If you're not familiar with salts acting as acids or bases, I recommend you check out my previous videos on those, and I'll link to those below. So we're going to solve a problem where we look at the pH of a sodium hypochlorite solution, an NaL, NaClO solution. So the problem is going to look like this. What is the pH of 0.3 molar sodium hypochlorite? And then it gives us the Ka of HClO. What steps are we going to follow? Well, step one is we're going to look at which of those ions in NaClO is responsible for the basic uh, nature of that compound. Then we're going to react that ion with water. Next, we're going to calculate the equilibrium constant for that reaction. Then we're going to use an ice table, much like we would in a weak acid or base problem, because it turns out when an ion acts like an acid or a base, it acts like a weak one. Then lastly, we'll use our pH equations. All right, let's go through this step by step. All right, first step, which of those ions is responsible for making the solution acidic or basic? Well, the first ion's Na. Na is neutral. That's because it comes from group one or two of the periodic table. So if you have a cation that comes from group three or greater, that typically means it's gonna act like an acid. Or if you have a cation that ends in H plus, it acts like an acid. That's neither of those. So that one is gonna be neutral. On the other hand, ClO turns out to be basic. Why is that? Well, ClO minus likes hydrogen ions. The way we know that is if we were to pair a hydrogen ion with ClO, it would make a weak acid. And weak acids mean they like to stay with their hydrogen. So if I just drop sodium hypochlorite into solution, the ClO minus is gonna run around the solution and grab hydrogen ions. And something that grabs hydrogen ions reduces their concentration in solution, making the solution basic. So remember that if you have an anion that looks like a weak acid when you put a hydrogen with it, it's gonna act like a base. So we know that ClO is what's gonna act like a base. So step two is react that ion with water. So we're gonna take ClO minus, and we're gonna react it with water. And since it is a base, it's gonna grab a proton, grab a hydrogen from water. And when it does that, we're gonna get HClO minus, or just HClO. And then the water, which has now lost one of its hydrogens, is gonna look like OH minus. So that's the reaction with water. Okay, now comes step three, where we calculate the equilibrium constant. This is a little funny, because you don't have to do this in a normal weak acid base problem. But notice here, we're given the Ka of HClO. That's this compound right here. Well, if we're given the Ka of that compound, it turns out we can actually go back to the Kb of this compound. So we're given Ka, and we want to go backwards to Kb. How do we do that? Well, if we remember that Ka times Kb equals 10 to the minus 14th, we can see it's a pretty easy problem to solve. All we have to do is rearrange to solve for Kb for our ClO minus. And so what that means is we're going to divide both sides by Ka. And we're going to get that Kb is equal to 10 to the minus 14th divided by Ka, which is equal to 10 to the minus 14th divided by 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8th. So that gives us ultimately a Kb of 3.45 times 10 to the minus 7. Now you only need to do this process when you're given a Ka and you need the Kb. So in this case, we were given the Ka of HClO. That's not the compound in our reaction. So we got to go to the Kb, which is our for our conjugate base, ClO minus. All right, so now that we have the equilibrium constant for our reaction, and we have the reaction, we're ready to go to step four, which is an ice table. So I've started here with the information we already determined, our equation with Kb. And now that you have the reaction and Kb, it's pretty much identical to a weak acid or base problem. So we're going to determine the initial, the change, and the equilibrium concentration of all of these reagents. So our initial concentration of ClO minus well, it's the same as our sodium hypochlorite concentration because remember the sodium and the chlorite fall apart and so the concentrations are the same. So my initial ClO minus concentration is 0 0.3 and then because it's a product, HClO and OH both start at zero. The reactants are gonna drop, so my change here is gonna be minus X 
and my products are going to increase. So the change is going to be plus x and plus x. So at equilibrium, I'm going to have 0 0.3 minus x for ClO minus, x for HClO, and x for OH. Remember that ultimately what we want to find is x so that we can plug it into our pH equations to get the pH. Now, uh, now that we've written down our ice table, we're ready to plug it into our equilibrium expression. So let's write our equilibrium expression. We know that Kb is going to be equal to reactants over products, or I'm sorry, products over reactants. So that's going to put HClO up top, OH up top, and ClO on the bottom. Our water isn't included because it's liquid. All right, now let's plug in some values. Our Kb we know is 3.45 times 10 to the minus 7, and that's going to be equal to x times x, or x squared, over 0 0.3 minus x. Now here is where we remember that if we have a small equilibrium constant, we can drop that subtracted x, and that really saves us a lot of time. The only reason we can do that is because our Kb is so small. So anytime that's less than, say, 10 to the minus 3, we can drop it. We have 10 to the minus 7, plenty small to drop it. So now we solve for x by multiplying both sides by 0 0.3. And then by taking the square root. So what we get is the square root of 0 0.3 times 3.45 times 10 to the minus 7 is equal to our x. So we got rid of that square root, or that square there by taking the square root. Okay, what does that give us? So that gives us x, which we remember is the concentration of our hydroxide. What is that? Well, when we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get the concentration of our hydroxide ions is 0 0.00032 molar. All right, so that was the ice table. So we've done all of our steps one through four. Lastly, we just got to use our pH equations. Here, since we have the concentration of hydroxide, we're going to use the pOH expression to start off. The pOH expression tells us that the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ions is equal to the pOH. So that's going to be the negative log of 0 0.00032. And when I do that, I'm going to get pOH is equal to, uh, what is pOH equal to? It's equal to 3.49. Okay, lastly, let me clean up the space. We know that our pOH is equal to 3.49. And lastly, we just remember that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. And so that means that our pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. So 14 minus 3.49 is going to give us a pH of 10.5. So that's our pH. So remember, we said at the beginning that sodium hypochlorite was going to be basic. And in fact, we've gotten a basic pH at the end. And that's a good thing to always check. Because you might have forgotten to go between Ka or Kb, or you might have forgotten to go between pOH and pH. So if originally you identified an ion as basic, you got to make sure you get a basic pH. It's above 7, that's basic, so that means we're good. So this is why, ultimately, pools become basic when you add sodium hypochlorite or chlorine. Because the ClO- grabs hydrogen ions and leaves behind this hydroxide, giving us a basic pH, in this case, at this concentration, of about 10.5. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please leave any questions you have below. As always, visit my channel for more chemistry videos. Thanks for watching.